physical scientists are continue studying the makeup of atoms. Their major objective is to find out exactly what parts make up the atom's nucleus. Scientists learn about these parts by bombarding the nucleus with projectiles called particles. This cyclotron, one of the machines used to do the bombarding, is called a particle accelerator. The public, who knows such instruments as atom smashers, has been quick to show interest in these inventions of the atomic age. That is why Frank Stevens, feature writer for the Sunday Supplement, is getting facts from Professor Porter of the university for an article on atom smashers. We physical scientists are using these specially designed machines and uh, these new techniques effectively. Even though atoms and atomic radiations are invisible to the human eye, I get the general idea, Professor, but one thing puzzles me. You talk of particles and waves of atomic radiation you can't see. You see these particles and waves move at almost incredible speeds. Now that seems a lot like guesswork to me. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, you might say that some answers to research uh, do come about through guesses, <laughs> at least partially. You see, scientists may make uh, predictions and hypotheses and uh, then test them out. I see. Professor Burr is right. Many of the facts about atoms have been learned through experiments designed to test predictions and hypotheses. For example, experiments based on earlier hypotheses indicate that the central part of the atom is made up of particles as we see here. It is this nucleus which may be shattered in the process of atom smashing. But about the atom smashers, or the particle accelerators as you call them, can I actually see one of them? I'll be very happy to take you down to the cyclotron pit in just a few minutes. But uh, first, let me check the book. My assistants are experimenting with silver today. With silver? Yes, they use the cyclotron to fire atomic particles at a piece of film. Mm -hmm. Some of the protons from the cyclotron strike the silver atoms in the film emulsion, breaking up their nuclei. Now, I'm particularly interested in studying nuclear particles which may be released in the bombardment called uh, mesons. Mesons help hold the atomic nucleus together. The more we learn about mesons and other parts of the nucleus, the better we'll be able to understand how to harness atomic forces and put them to work for us. However, suppose we go down and have a look at the cyclotron. Fine. This is the kind of cyclotron that Professor Porter will show his guest. By using this model of a cyclotron, its principal parts can easily be seen. The large steel frame is the electromagnet. Between the magnet's upper and lower coils is a vacuum tank. Inside the tank, nuclear particles are accelerated to high speeds and then fired into the target. Vacuum pumps remove the air from the tank or chamber. An oscillator controls the electric current that operates the cyclotron. Huge reinforced concrete blocks cover and surround the cyclotron to protect workers from the harmful radiations that are released when the cyclotron is in operation. The experiment takes place within the tank between the poles of the magnet. Inside is a metal box shaped like a letter D. This experiment begins by admitting hydrogen gas into the tank. A heated filament helps change the hydrogen gas into hydrogen ions, called protons, which have positive charges. These charged particles are first accelerated to high speed and then fired into the target being studied. As the oscillator alternately charges the D positively and negatively, the protons are alternately repelled and then attracted. Finally, they strike a target and nuclear fragments, and in some cases, radioactive atoms called isotopes, are the products born. In the silver experiment, the target is a special film emulsion. The path of the particle striking and leaving the target are recorded by the special photographic emulsion. Let's review the operation of the cyclotron. 
Hydrogen ions, which are protons, are alternately attracted and repelled by changes in the electrical field affecting them. This action, which goes on at the rate of millions of times a second, forces a stream of ions to speed around a spiral path until finally the ions smash into the target. The results of such bombardments can be photographed. The kinds of tracks left in the film emulsion by the different kinds of particles which are blasted from the nucleus may be identified by measurements. Here, a special photographic plate is being mounted for entry into the vacuum chamber of the cyclotron. The physicists make final adjustments and then leave the area. A large protective door is closed to seal off the cyclotron pit from the control room. Then, the cyclotron is set into operation. Bombardment of the target is underway. In the silver experiment, a bombardment continues for about two minutes. After showing how the work is done, Professor Porter summarizes the procedure. So you see, the protons from the cyclotron hit the target, breaking up the nuclei of the silver atoms. It's like using bullets amazingly small ones that travel with fantastic speeds. We get our most important information by studying the remains of the target after it's been bombarded. What kind of results do you get? Well, you'll remember that I said that some of the particles hit the atoms, the silver atoms, in the film emulsion, mm -hmm. breaking up the nuclei. Well, when the film is developed, we get a picture that will look something like this. They see tracks of particles which have been knocked out of a nucleus by a bombarding proton. The proton's track is shown at the top part of the picture. With pictures like this, we can figure out the velocity and mass of particles. Velocity and mass? Is that the same as speed and weight? Well, for all practical purposes, yes. Well, tell me, Professor, is film the only way to record the results of such experiments? Oh, no, we have other ways. Uh, cloud chambers can be used. This is a small cloud chamber. Oh, yes. Whatever the size, all cloud chambers consist of a drum-like compartment sealed over with glass. Inside, there is gas saturated with water vapor. Any charged particle passing through this chamber leaves a trail of water vapor, similar to the cloud trail left by a high-flying airplane on a cold day. The trail in the cloud chamber can be illuminated and photographed. With this cloud chamber, one of the largest in the world, important pictures are being obtained. Here are pictures of nuclear explosions. It sounds as if it's only a matter of time before scientists know all about the atom. Well, that's hard to say. It's taken a lot of research to get as far as we are. There's a lot more to be done. Yes, I suppose so. But you certainly do have marvelous research tools in these atom smashers. You said there were three different kinds, didn't you, Professor? Yes, there are three principal kinds. Uh -huh. Professor Porter refers to cyclotrons, betatrons, and linear accelerators. Each of these three particle accelerators operates on a different principle. Cyclotrons accelerate heavy positive particles like protons from hydrogen. This betatron accelerates electrons which are negative particles. Linear accelerators, like this, are used to accelerate either positive or negative particles. A moving belt operates inside the huge tank as shown in this model. Electrical charges produced at the bottom of the model are carried on the moving belt to a sphere at the top. In this drawing of a horizontal model, the moving belt is shown by the arrows. Positive charges are carried to the outer surface of the sphere located inside the tank at the right. A high voltage develops between the sphere and the target. As in the cyclotron tank, gas particles are converted into a cloud of ions shown in the upper part of the sphere. 
Accelerator voltage increases as a charged particle moves along the accelerator tube at the top. This is symbolized by the increasing number of negative signs. By using one positive charge to symbolize a stream of ions, we see the path taken through the accelerator tube to the target at the left. Well, tell me, Professor, are X-ray machines a kind of particle accelerator, sort of uh, an atom smasher? Yes, an X-ray tube uh, is an accelerator. Uh, so is the uh, picture tube in your television set. But X-ray tubes can provide energies to electrons of only about uh, 200,000 volts. The cyclotron and the betatron can depends upon some of the newest of all principal kinds is leading to new discoveries. Discoveries that are helping man understand their 